Hello and welcome to a new video about digital technology. Last time we talked about multiplexing and multiplexing. This time I want to show you how demultiplexing is working. So selecting on which output is at one input is appearing. Right? I'm directly showing M demultiplexing. Yeah? The same for demultiplex like the last time we have done with the MOOCs. And uh, also the straightforward approach. Yeah? So actually what we have, we are again having four end blocks. But this time the, the, the output of those four end blocks are separated. Yeah? Because I have four outputs. So we have here an output, we have here an output, we have here an output, we have here an output. Yeah? However, I only have one input. So this is the one input to the end, yeah? is our one input, which I want to select where it is appearing. All right. So we have here one input I, and we have several outputs, O0, O1, O2, O3. Okay, O1, <laughs> O3. Uh, and then we have again two selection lines. And I will do it again like that. That I have the two selection lines. So we have somewhere select a null now. Huh? And then we have select a one. That's it. Huh? That's it. This is a demultiplexer. Let's imagine what is happening if we select S0 and S1 in different combinations, which, where, at which output is the input appearing. Okay, let's make a table. Let's make again the same order. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. If we have 0, 0, the output, the input is appearing at output 0, O0. Oh, if we have zero one, this is zero, this is one, it's appearing at O2. Yeah? If we have one zero, one zero, this is appearing at O1, yeah? and if we have one one, this is appearing at O3. And now look at that. If we have the same selection, input I0 is appearing at, input I2 is appearing, Input R3 is appearing at all, and it's the same. Yeah. So if we have the same selection, the same selection bits, the corresponding inputs of the multiplexer are appearing at the corresponding output of the demultiplexer. This is working exactly the same way. Yeah? And how would the symbol look like? It also looks like exactly like the multiplexer symbol, yeah. It's Dmax. We have a G1 and G2. These are the two selection lines. S0 and S1. We have one input. One input. I. And we have our four outputs. One, two, three, four. O zero, O one, O two, and O three. And when will this be? This will be not one and not two. This will be one and not two. This will be not one and two. And this will be one and two. 
symbol. You see, it's working exact, ex exactly the same way, but exactly different. Huh? So it's, it's the same logic behind. Huh? It's not that complicated. Huh? And suddenly, with a combination of multiplexer and demultiplexer, I can use only one transfer line and so on. Yeah? This opens a lot of, of, of possibilities in, in logic. Huh? Multiplexer, demultiplexer. Nice topic. Now we talked a lot of discrete signals, zeros and one signals, logic signals. Next things we are talking about is how to get from an analog world to the digital world and vice versa. So how to deal with signals which are not only zero and one logic signals, but with different signals. So we're talking about converters. We're talking about analog digital converters and we're talking about digital analog converters. Next time we're talking about the basics of the converters. What is a resolution? What is linearity? And so on. What is accuracy? Those things will be covered in next video. Basic names and terms of ADCs, analog digital converters. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.